Hi, I'm Katie of KT in the Squid. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the Velia pullover, which is what I'm wearing right here. Be sure to subscribe if you are looking for videos related to crochet. I share all kinds of crochet tutorials as well as product reviews, yarn reviews related to crochet. So the Velia pattern is fairly simple. Um, I would say it's beginner friendly if you know how to half double crochet slip stitch and single crochet you should be pretty set to follow this pattern i will walk you through some of the things that might be a little bit more difficult for a beginner but i did design it so that it's seamless so if you don't like seaming garments which i don't this might be a great pattern for you um, so i designed it so it's super cozy it's really easy to wear uh, the sizes are extra small through 5x uh, I will be making extra small in the video, but you can reference the free pattern on my blog and I'll link to that or you can purchase the PDF if you'd like to print your patterns. So it's like I said, it's super easy to wear. I think it's really comfortable. I think it fits really well. There's not any shaping in the body, which I think is like super cozy, but I did do some tapering of the arms because I like a tapered sleeve so that they're not too loose. I did design the neck to be a little bit taller than I normally do and which I think is super cozy and great for the winter which is what we're um, in right now and it also the neckline drops down a bit so that it's not like choking you in the front. So let's grab our yarn and get started. For this project I will be using Cotton Top DK from King Cole. I will link to where you can find a stockist of King Cole yarn this yarn is DK Weight. It is 78% premium acrylic and 22% cotton and it is 284 yards per skein. In the pattern you will find the amount of yarn that you need for the size that you're making. I will also be using a 5.5 millimeter hook or a size I. This will be used for the main part of the sweater and then you'll also need one hook that is 0.5 millimeters smaller than your gauge hook. So I have a 5 millimeter or a size H. This will be used for the trim around the bottom as well as around the sleeves and the neck. Before you get started, you will need to make a gauge swatch. I'll link to a video where I show how to do the main stitch for this pattern. The larger hook is going to be your gauge swatch, so start with a 5.5 millimeter, and if you need to adjust, you can adjust from there. And then your smaller hook needs to be 0.5 millimeters smaller than the hook that you end up using to get the correct gauge. You may also find it helpful to have a few stitch markers handy. These are my recycled stitch markers that I sell in my Etsy shop, as well as I use these counting stitch markers that have numbers on them so you can keep track of your row counts. I will also show you how to use some scrap yarn to help you dealing with working in the round. So some scrap yarn can work, bobby pins, anything like that. I do find using stitch markers really helpful though, so make sure you have a couple handy just in case. So here's my actual sweater. I'm gonna start by showing you a smaller sample of how to make the body of the sweater, and then I'll show you the actual sleeves. Here I'm just about done with my sweater. I've done the full body and the trim on the bottom. I've finished one sleeve, and then I'm almost, I've started the second sleeve. So the way this pattern is going to work is we're going to start with the back. So I'm going to flip this over because that was the front. So here's the back of my sweater. We're going to start with a foundation chain which is going to end up being across here and this part of the sweater is going to sit on your shoulders. So we're going to start with a chain that goes across the back. Then you'll work to the length of the arm opening, which will come here. So you can see my sleeve is right here. So this is the length of the arm opening. And then we'll fasten off, leaving the length of the arm. And then we'll make the front of the sweater. So I'll flip it over and show you. So then what we'll do is we will join and work the front so we'll work the first part of the neck opening which is right here and then we'll fasten off and we'll make the second part of the neck opening which is right here 
And then we'll join the whole front and work the rest of the arm length. Once you have all of that, you'll have the, the top half of the sweater, or the top quarter of the sweater really. After that, we will start working the bottom of the sweater and that will be worked in a continuous rounds, well not continuous rounds, they'll be joined rounds that are turned, but we'll work it in rounds all the way to the bottom. Then we'll add the trim. Once you're done with the trim at the bottom, you will make your sleeves, which will be added right onto the body of the sweater. You'll make the trim of the sleeve and then you'll do the second sleeve. And then you'll add the trim for the neck. So that's how it's all going to come together. I'm going to start off by showing you a smaller sample for the entire body of the sweater. To start the back, for size extra small is what I made, you're going to chain 77. Be sure to reference the pattern for any other stitch, for different stitch counts for different sizes. And this is going to be your foundation chain, like I just explained, that's going to sit on the back of your neck. So I'm just going to chain a smaller uh, sample just to show you how this is going to come together. So we're going to pretend that I have 77 chains here and then we're going to start the length of the back. So it's just like the gauge swatch which you should have done before you started. You're going to half double crochet into the second chain from your hook and then you're going to slip stitch into the next. Then you're going to half double crochet into the next and then slip stitch into the next and you'll repeat that all the way across. So half double crochet, slip stitch. And for size extra small, that'll give you a total of 78 or 76 stitches. Remember that first, that chain that you skip does not count as a stitch. Row two is the same that you did for your gauge swatch. You're gonna chain one and turn and then repeat the pattern. So half double crochet into the first stitch, slip stitch into the next. So you're always working a half double crochet into the slip stitch below and you're always working a slip stitch into the half double crochet below. So you repeat that all the way across. And then for the length of the back, you're going to repeat row two for a number of rows. For size extra small, it's going to be a total of 30 rows. Or no, for extra small, it's going to be a total of 28 rows. Be sure to reference your pattern if you're making a different size. So you'll repeat row two until you have the length of the back or it's the length of the arm opening. If you'd like, you can add some stitch markers to help you keep track of your rows. I'll link to where I sell stitch markers in my Etsy shop. So I'm going to work a few more rows of my sample to show you what to do next. So here we're going to pretend that I have my 28 rows and then I'll fasten off. And again, this will be the back of your sweater, so it's actually going to go like this, and this part, the foundation chain is going to rest on your shoulders, and then this length will be the length of your arm opening. So next we're going to start the front, and to begin, you're going to join to the back side of the first chain of the foundation chain. So again, this is our foundation chain, and then our first chain is right here, and you know that's your first chain because your end is hanging off here. So I'm going to join to this first chain. So we're not going to work all the way across for this first row, this first little section. We need to leave a, a gap for the neck opening for your head to go in for the sweater. So for the first few rows, you're only going to work 
to a certain point. So for a size extra small, it says you're going to half double crochet slip stitch for a total of 22 stitches. So if you want to make this a little bit easier on yourself, you can go ahead and count 22 stitches, place your stitch marker, and then just work your pattern until you get to that stitch marker. So I'm just going to work, I think I'm going to work a total of 10 stitches here for my sample. That 10 is totally ar arbitrary, so don't pay attention to that number. It's just for my sample here. Um, extra small, it's 22. Check the pattern for all the other sizes. So here I'm working into the back side of that chain, and it's just the same stitch pattern. Half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch. Okay, so we'll pretend that that was 22 stitches. Next, you'll chain one and turn, and you'll just repeat row two of the back, which is half double crochet slip stitch. And you'll work this little section for a total of 13 rows, and that's the same for all sizes. So the neck opening is the same for all sizes. So I'll just work a couple rows, and then I'll show you how to do the second side. After you have your 13 rows for the first side of your neck, you can go ahead and fasten off. Next what we'll do is we'll work the second side of the neck. So in the pattern, it's going to tell you to skip 32 chains here. And that's the same for all sizes. So we'll skip 32, I'll skip 10, 1, 2, So you'll join here and you will end up joining, uh, it, it should be in a slip stitch here because it's an even number of stitches. So this side will have the same amount of stitches as this side. So make sure that your stitch count is all correct. So you go ahead and join with your working yarn here. Okay, so you'll chain one and then you'll continue working across just like you did for the first side. So you'll half double crochet, slip stitch all the way across. So for size extra small, that should be 22 stitches. Next you'll repeat row 2 just like you did for this size, for this side, for a total of 13 rows. And again, that's the same for every size. So I'll work a few more, I'll work the same amount of rows that I have on this side. And then I will show you how we join the whole thing together. After row 13 on the second side, you're not going to fasten off, you're going to continue and we'll join these two sides together and close this gap here to, um, to finish the neck opening. So you're going to chain one and turn and you'll work your pattern all the way across. So half double crochet, this is row 14, half double crochet, slip stitch all the way across this second side, the second front side. So when you get to the end of the second front side, we need to um, create some chains to go across here to create the, the front part of the neck opening. So you're going to chain the same amount of stitches that you skipped here. So for the pattern, that is 32, and it's the same for all sizes. Then you're just going to pick right up at the end of row 13 of the first side, and you'll half double crochet into that first stitch. And then you'll slip stitch into the next and you'll repeat your pattern all the way across. So half double crochet, slip stitch. And 
that's the end of row 14. So you can see this is now our neck opening. So we're going to, so rows 15 through 28 for extra small, you're going to repeat the same pattern, half double crochet slip stitch. When you get to the change, you're just going to treat the chains just like any other stitch so you'll half double crochet slip stitch half double crochet slip stitch all the way across the chains um, it doesn't matter if you go into the back loops the front loops or the back bumps it doesn't matter do whatever is most comfortable for you however you like to stick your hook in there um, the inside will be covered with trim so you're not going to see that just make sure you do the same thing all the way across next you'll repeat the same pattern for a total of 28 rows for size extra small for the front so you have the same amount of stitches for the front as you do for the back and again that is your arm opening length so when you're done with your 28 stitches or 28 rows do not fasten off we're going to start we'll, we'll join this whole thing together like this and start working our rounds for the bottom of the sweater. So then we're starting round one of the sweater and for the rounds I suggest having at least a couple of scrap pieces of yarn handy because this is going to help you keep track of where the start and the, the beginning and the end of your round is. So to start, we're going to start with the same pattern that we've been working. We'll half double crochet into the first stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that all the way across the front. So I'm actually going to take this scrap yarn and I'm going to pop it in this very first stitch. If you'd like to use actual stitch markers, you can. I just like using scrap pieces of yarn like this because we're going to be moving it a lot and I feel like it's a little bit less fiddly moving the yarn than it is moving an actual stitch marker. But do keep in mind if you put your project down, um, you might want to pop in a real stitch marker so that these don't accident accidentally fall out. So we'll repeat the pattern all the way across, half double crochet, slip stitch until we get to the end of the front. Once you get to the end of your front, that last stitch you'll slip stitch into. Then you're going to fold this in half and you're going to continue working across the back. So into the first stitch of the back, you're going to half double crochet because that's the next stitch in our stitch pattern. And then just like we've been doing, you're going to slip stitch into the next. So half double crochet slip stitch all the way across until you get to the end of the back. Here I am at the end of the back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join to the first stitch of this round to complete the round. So I marked that first stitch so that's where we'll join. And we're going to leave that stitch marker there for now. So I'll join with a slip stitch and then I'll chain one. So now to keep this pattern consistent, we're gonna chain one and turn. So we're working in rounds, but we're turning at the end of every round. So next I'm gonna half double crochet into the first stitch. And when you're turning, you wanna be careful that you're not um, working into the slip stitch join that we just created. You want to make sure that you're working into the slip stitch, which was the last stitch of the round. If you want, when you work that very last stitch, you could add a stitch marker there just so you know where it is. So we're going to half double crochet into that first stitch. And then again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other scrap piece of yarn and I'm going to stick it into 
this half double crochet because I know that that's the first stitch of my round. So now I'm just going to continue the same pattern all the way around. So a uh, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet. And we'll go all the way around and I'll show you how these stitch markers are going to help us out here. Here I'm coming to the end of round two. So there's a half double crochet and then I know that last slip stitch needs to go into this stitch because that's where I left my stitch marker. And then I know I need to join into this stitch because that's where my other stitch marker is. So I'm going to do my slip stitch join there. Then when I start my next round and I do my half double crochet into the first stitch here, I can go ahead and move this stitch marker up into that first stitch. So now the body of the sweater is just a repeat of that round two until you have a total of 72 rounds. As you're working your rounds, you might find it helpful to use those numbered stitch markers that I showed you to keep track of how many rounds you have, and then you'll add the trim to the bottom. The bottom trim of this sweater is going to be worked using the same technique for the bottom of the sleeves and the neck. So what I've done is I've swapped out my hook to a smaller hook. I was using a 5.5 millimeter, and this is a 5 millimeter. So you'll want to go down 0.5 millimeters to work the trim. So I'm going to give you a couple tips to kind of help make this process go a little bit easier. So we're going to start by chaining 15. For row one, you're going to single crochet into the second chain from hook, and then you'll single crochet in every chain until you get back to the body of your sweater. After you complete row one, you will have 14 single crochets. Once you get back to the bottom of your sweater, we need to work a couple stitches to anchor the trim to the bottom of our sweater. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into the first two stitches of the body of the sweater. So I'll slip stitch into this one and then slip stitch into that one. And that will that'll act as an anchor to the bottom of our sweater and then it'll also act as the chain one before you turn to work the next row. So my big tip for this trim is going to be how you turn your work. So normally when you turn your work, you turn it the same way. You always go to the left or you always go to the right. Whatever way you turn, you always go the same way. But when I'm adding the trim to the bottom of something, what I do is one side I will turn one way and then the other side I will turn the other way. So I do that because if you're working with a sweater connected and you're always turning the same way, you, you're ending up having to flip your sweater over and over and over again in circles and it, for me it gets a little bit annoying and because you're turning the same way each time on each side, it doesn't affect the look at all. I think it, it, um, it'll look just fine because it's anchored to something and you're not going to notice it. So when you get to the bottom here, Normally I turn this way, so normally I go to the left, but I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go to the right so that my working yarn is coming around the front. I mean, it doesn't matter. You could go the other way if you want on this side. It just makes sure that you're flip-flopping um, the opposite side on each, on the end of each row. So we want to make sure that we're skipping these first two slip stitches 
and then we're going to work single crochet into the back loop only all the way across. Um, make sure that you're skipping those slip stitches and not accidentally missing the first stitch. Remember you have 14 stitches so make sure you count to make sure that you didn't uh, accidentally skip a sk stitch or add one. So we're going to work single crochet in the back loop only all the way across. So here I am at the end and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn the normal way that I turn. See then I didn't have to flip my sweater all the way around. All I had to do was turn it one way. So next you're going to do uh, single crochet into the back loop of each stitch again. And once you work into the last stitch, again you need to anchor this to the bottom of the body of your sweater. So we are going to slip stitch into the next two. And then again I'm going to turn the way I don't normally turn and all I have to do is flip my sweater over instead of turning it all the way around. And it's just a matter of repeating those two rows all the way around. So working in the back loops and then anchoring the, the trim to the bottom of the sweater as you go. So you're going to do that all the way around until you come back to the other side and then you will slip stitch the two sides together. I've completed one sleeve here on my sweater and I'm going to show you how to do it on the other side. Uh, so the sleeve is going to be worked directly onto the arm opening of the sweater so there's no seaming or anything. Um, you're going to join and work a number of stitches and then in the pattern it has listed what rows or what rounds you need to decrease on. So for example, if I'm making size extra small and in the pattern it says that I need to decrease every eighth round and then all the other sizes I've listed all the rounds that you need to add a decrease round. And then if you look further down on the pattern you can see what the decrease round is. So I'll show you how to do that. And as you can see here I've used my stitch markers. These markers are just marking um, my rows so I have 20, 40, 60, and it's just keeping track of my row counts. So here's the arm opening that I'm going to add my second sleeve. Um, it's important to keep in mind that you need to join with the same side facing out as you did for your first sleeve. So um, this is my right side of my sweater because that's where I determined my seam for the bottom is on the inside and the seam for my second sleeve is on the inside so I've already de determined that this is the right side of my sweater so I'm just going to keep the right side facing out because that's how I joined for the first sleeve so just make sure that you are um, that they match so the same side is facing out for both sleeves so to start what you're going to do is you're going to join the yarn to the underarm so closest to the the very bottom of the sleeve opening down here. And then our instructions are telling us to work the same pattern, our half double crochet slip stitch around the opening of the sleeve and then it gives us a stitch count so for extra small I need to work a total of 50 stitches around the opening of the sleeve and then it says as a tip it says with the, the first half of the stitches should be on one side of the sleeve opening before the seam and then the second half should be on the other side. So this is just an easy way to break it down so that you make sure that your, even, your stitches are pretty evenly spaced. So um, right here I have my end hanging out where I started my chain. So I know that that is the midway point of my arm opening. So if I was working on the other side, I might just pop a stitch marker right there. But since this end is hanging out, I just know that that's my landmark to tell me. So I need 50 stitches. So by the time I get here, I should have 25 stitches. 
and then the other half will be 25. Now if you wanted to break that down even more, because maybe you're worried that you're going to have too many stitches bunched up somewhere, you can take this, kind of fold it in half, and then you'll find the midway point between these two, um, between this first side. So you can break it down into quarters. So this would be my midway point, and what I can do is I can go ahead and pop a stitch marker in there. And then I can do the same thing for the other side. I can put a stitch marker in right here. And then what I've done is I've essentially broken this down into quarters. So I need 50 stitches all the way around. So if I want to break that down into quarters, what I could do is say, well, I need um, 12 stitches here, and then I can add my 13th stitch here. 12 stitches here, 12 stitches here, add the 13th here, and 12 stitches here, and that'll give me 50. So if it, if it works better for you to break it down even more, I suggest separating it into quarters, and that's going to help make sure that your stitches are evenly spaced all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and work around the opening of my sleeve. Now working into the sides of your rows, it's not really important where you put your hook when you're working the stitch, it's just important that you keep it fairly consistent all the way throughout. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I get this started. So. Again, it's just our same stitch pattern. Hopefully we can see here. So I'm going to start with a half double crochet into this first spot here. And I need to try and keep count. So that's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, twelve, and then I'll pop that thirteenth stitch right where my stitch marker is. So thirteen. So now I know I need to have 12 stitches from here to here. So one, two, three, ten, eleven, and twelve. So it works out pretty evenly. So there's the first half. So I'm just going to do the second, the same thing on the second half, and then I'll join to the first stitch with a slip stitch. Here I am at my last stitch, and I'll go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch. So you'll want to um, double count or double check your stitch count to make sure that it is the right count. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this stitch marker, I don't need it there anymore, and I'm just going to place it um, right here to mark that this is my first row because it can get a little bit tricky when you're counting the rows going this way because this all kind of blends together with the body of the sweater. You want to make sure you know where the first row is so you know where to start counting. So I like to put a stitch marker there just to kind of help me um, know where it is. Okay, so the row two, round two, um, if you look at the pattern, you'll notice that the wording changes slightly, and there's a reason for that. So it's basically telling you to half double crochet in every slip stitch, and then slip stitch into every half double crochet. It's the same pattern we've been working throughout. The only I re, I, the reason that I changed the wording of it is because um, we're going to start working some decrease rounds and that's going to change the pattern a little bit because when you decrease 
instead of ending with a slip stitch and starting with a half double crochet, it's going to flip flop. And you just want to make sure that you're always working your half double crochet into your slip stitch and your slip stitch, slip stitch into your half double crochet. So that's why the wording changes a little bit. So you're going to keep the same pattern throughout. It's just going to start and end with different stitches as you work the decrease rounds. So round two, it's the same pattern that we've been working throughout. You're going to chain one and turn. And if you need those stitch markers to help keep track of your first um, your first stitch so you know where to work, you can still work, use those stitch markers. But that's really going to come in helpful after we do our decrease rounds because we're going to be starting with a slip stitch. And I'll show you that in a second. So half double crochet into the first stitch, slip stitch into the next, and you'll repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. So um, next the, the pattern is telling you to repeat round two, adding those decrease rounds where it's telling you in the pattern. So I'm going, since I'm working size extra small, my first decrease round is going to be round eight. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working my pattern until I get to round eight and I'll show you that first decrease round. I'm ready to start my first decrease round of my sleeve for size extra small, which I'm making. It's round eight, um, but check the pattern because it will be different rounds for other sizes, but this, the method is the same. So what I've done is I've placed a stitch marker on the first and last stitch of row seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn. And then the instructions tell us to skip the first stitch and then you're going to half double crochet into every slip stitch and slip stitch into every half double crochet. So since I've marked that first stitch, I know I'm going to skip that. Now my next stitch here is a half double crochet. So let's zoom in. So this first stitch here, I'm going to skip that stitch. My next stitch here is a half double crochet. So I need to slip stitch into the half double crochet. So this round will start with a slip stitch into that first stitch. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to move that stitch marker up into this first stitch. Because that'll be really helpful later when I'm trying to figure out where my stitch is. Next stitch is a half double crochet. And then I'm just going to repeat the same pattern all the way around until there is that last stitch remaining, which is where I have my other stitch marker. So I'll work all the way around until I get to that last stitch. I've worked until that last marked stitch remains, and that is a slip stitch. Well, so the stitch before it was a slip stitch, so I half double crocheted into that stitch. So now I need to skip this last stitch and then join to the first stitch of the round. And since I have my stitch marker in there, it's really easy to find that stitch. I just stick my hook in where that stitch marker is and I join. And then I'm going to chain one and turn. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to leave that stitch marker there. I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to work the next round and I, I want to leave this stitch marker here because I want to know where that very last stitch is. So now we're just repeating round two which is half double crochet into every slip stitch and slip stitch into every half double crochet. So I'm leaving this stitch marker here because that slip stitch can be really hard to find without the stitch marker so even if you're a pretty experienced crocheter I highly recommend using some sort of stitch marker so you know where that last stitch is. So the first stitch is a half double crochet, so I'll be slip stitching, and then what I want to do is I want to move this stitch marker into that first stitch so I can find where to join um, when I get to the first stitch. So I'm just going to lay this over because it's easier than trying to get it in. 
So then I know where the first stitch is, so when I get to the end of this round, I know where to join. So it, um, we're just gonna repeat round two, which is half double crochet in every slip stitch, slip stitch into every half double crochet. And you'll repeat that until you get to the next decrease round, and I'll show you how to do the next decrease round. So basically, the decrease rounds are gonna flip flop. Um, when I worked this decrease round, I ended up having to start with slip stitches afterwards, if that makes sense. And then when I work the next decrease round, it'll flip and you'll start with a half double crochet. I hope that makes sense. It'll make sense as you work. So I'm gonna work to the next decrease round and I'll show you how to do that one. Also, I wanna say after every decrease round, you will be decreasing by two stitches. So if you purchase the PDF, I have included a chart with all the stitch counts for the sleeves. Um, but if you wanna just go off of the free pattern, it's super easy to find out. You just um, every decrease round decreases by two stitches, so if you want to keep a like a tally sheet or something um, on a scrap piece of paper so that you can make sure that you have the right number of stitches, you can go ahead and do that, and it's really easy to figure out. But if you purchase the PDF, it's done for you, and I have a chart with all the decrease rounds color-coded. Before I move on to the next decrease round, I do want to show you how these stitch markers are helpful. Um, if you were to look at this, you'd pr it'd probably just be a jumbled mess of stitches. It would be really hard to see where to work. So here I've come to, this is my very last stitch of the round. So I worked a slip stitch into that half double crochet and that's a slip stitch. So I need to half double crochet into that marked stitch. And it was really easy to find because I had that stitch marker in there. And then I know I need to join to this first stitch which I can easily find because that stitch marker is in there. So I'll just join and then I'll chain one and turn and then when I do my next slip stitch I'm going to take this stitch marker out and I'll move it to the first the first slip stitch of the next round. So definitely use these stitch markers to help you out here. So I've come to the last stitch of my last round before the next decrease round. Um, I'm going to work my last stitch into the first marked stitch of that previous round. So I have a half double crochet here. Um, so this size extra small, so this is row 15 and then uh, it's round 15 and then round 16 is my next decrease round. So I'm going to take that stitch marker out and I'm going to move it to this last stitch, this last half double crochet. That way I have my first and last stitch marked of the previous round and that'll show me which stitches I need to skip. So I'll chain one and turn to start the next decrease round. So I need to skip the first stitch and then continue in our pattern until one stitch remains and then I'll skip that last stitch. So basically after this decrease round we're kind of resetting to the same stitch pattern that we worked the body of the sweater. So the first stitch since that next stitch is a slip stitch will be a half double crochet. So like I said every decrease it'll make it'll flip flop what stitch you're starting with. So I'm going to go ahead and work uh, the rest of the pattern until I get to that last stitch. Before I do that, I did forget to move the stitch marker up to that first half double crochet, just so you know where the first stitch of the round is. So move your stitch marker up if you need to. So here I am almost at the end. I will slip stitch into that last half double crochet and then I will skip the last stitch and join to the first stitch which is where that stitch marker is. I'll chain one and turn and I will continue to work round two until I get to the next decrease round. So for the rest of the sleeve you'll go ahead and continue in that fashion adding your decrease rounds where you need to until you get to 70 rounds. So 70 is the same for all sizes. And then I'll show you my finished sleeve here. 
And then when you get to the end, so this is round 70, when you get to the end you will work the trim just like you did for the bottom of the sweater and just make sure that you put your seam on the same side that you did for the bottom of your sweater. So this is the inside of my sweater and I made sure that's the same as it is for the bottom. Then to finish things up you're going to work the neck trim. So the neck trim is super easy after you've done everything else. You're going to start by, you'll join with your yarn and I believe I joined, can't even find it. Oh, I joined right here. No, I didn't. I joined back here. So this is kind of like the back of my sweater. So join anywhere. I mean, you can't even see my seam. I couldn't find it. Um, because you want the seam to be somewhere in the back so it's not kind of floating out in the front. Um, so, and then you will do a round of single crochet just evenly around the neck. Um, I believe I did one for every row and then you do one for every chain here and then one for every row and then one for every chain on the back and then you'll work the neck trim just like you did for the bottom and the sleeve only you're going to just chain 13 for a total of 12 stitches so the neck trim is slightly shorter than the sleeve and the bottom trim and then you can finish your sweater, you'll uh, block it if you'd like and sew in your ends and then I will pop in a few clips here of the finished sweater. So I'm really happy with how this sweater came out and I hope you really enjoyed this video and this pattern. If you make this, be sure to tag me on social media if you share it. I'd love to see your finished sweaters. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.